Walt Disney will acquire much of the global empire that Rupert Murdoch has assembled over three decades, at least when it comes to media and entertainment on the TV side. Uh, what Walt Disney gets from 21st Century Fox for $52.4 billion, not counting debt, is 21st Century Fox's film and television studios, cable entertainment networks, and international TV businesses. The TV businesses include FX Networks, National Geographic, a 39% stake in Sky, which is Europe's largest satellite TV provider. Disney also gets some very popular entertainment entertainment properties such as X-Men, Avatar, the largest crossing film in history, and The Simpsons. And finally, how does it change Disney's position in India? Well, Disney will now own Star and its entire portfolio of channels, one of India's most watched TV networks, as well as Sky's stake in Tata Sky, one of the country's most popular DTH providers. However, media mogul Rupert Murdoch will continue to hold on to some of the assets through a spin-off. So, for instance, Fox News in the U.S. will stay with 20th Century Fox or 21st Century Fox or with the Murdochs. Uh, now, let's get you a sense of what all of this means for the entertainment industry, what all of this means for the entertainment industry in India as well. And to do that, we're joined uh, by well-known venture capital investor, m and expert, and a columnist here at Bloomberg Quint, Saravi Singh. Saravi, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us this early in the morning. Uh, it's, it's not fair to reduce this down to an India play. Uh, so let's first ask you what you make of uh, Murdoch's decision not necessarily to exit uh, the media and entertainment business, but to change the way he's betting on it through a smaller stake in a much more substantial, larger entity, uh, which is what Disney will be once it's able to absorb uh, all of these businesses of 21st Century Fox. Yeah, hi, Menika. Uh, I think what you said is absolutely right. I think this is a very uh, big moment. I mean, a person who has spent uh, the better part of his life building and assembling this empire i mean as you probably know he started out as a newspaper you know person in australia and to get to this scale and for a person like that to sell uh, you know his crown jewels as it were is a very big uh, moment and i think he's doing it for one very simple reason that the media business and the tv business in particular is no longer what it was the competitors are no longer you know so his concern is not competing with tv people his concern is that Fox will not be able to compete in the future with your Netflix, with Google, with Apple, with uh, Amazon. And to take on those people, he needs to be aligned with someone who is, you know, uh, ready to uh, spend money and bring out services which will do that. And uh, if you see what Disney has done, uh, they have really taken a hard right turn in the last two years where they've said, look, we give up. We are giving up on the earlier model of, you know, content and distribution. We are going direct to consumer. We need the world's best assets for that. And I think this merger is a reflection of that. Sarabin, how would you assess Disney's success when it comes to this direct-to-consumer play, right? For instance, whether it's Hulu or now they will acquire Hotstar in India. The way Star has gone about building Hotstar's audiences, uh, as opposed to how Disney has been able to, uh, over a period of time, be able to build out a competing effort to the Netflixes and the Amazons of the world. Do you think it has had as much success as one would have liked to see with a media giant of that size? Is it ahead of the curve when it comes to this direct to consumer play? Well, uh, the honest truth there is, uh, Menika, that Disney has so far been, you know, uh, very quiet and frankly, they made several mistakes, right? They actually supported Netflix. They gave content to Netflix and even today, Disney content is available uh, through, through next year as well. So I think Disney, uh, this is actually a catch-up kind of strategy where they sort of, you know, things went away from them and now they've taken a decision that they're going after this uh, opportunity they're going to launch two services next year one is a sports service one is going to be a family service in 2019 and now they've acquired control of hulu which they said will now become a, a adult service or whatever that means so i think it's uh, it, this is really a furious catch up from disney and i think that's why uh, murdoch has insisted that uh, bob Iger stay on as ceo because you know it's did we just lose your audio sarabir can you hear us line all right we're just checking but you know i thought a couple of things were interesting about this deal and if we can get sarabir back in the next couple of minutes it would be most pertinent to ask him about the india play and all of this three percent of the box office in the u.s that's a substantive share that disney will now have yeah. uh, some top grossing films of all time avatar the four sequels thereafter 
of course, Disney's got its own Star Wars coming out this week. So uh, it's going to be, you know, I mean, sort of a, a mega enterprise. And I know we'll have to wait and see whether we'll, they'll be able, to be able to clear all the regulatory requirements, mm. which is expected to be a year and a half. But we do have Sarah Weir back. Uh, Sarah Weir, I have two very short, quick questions for you over the next minute. Uh, one is that, you know, what does this tell us about how the media space is changing? For instance, investors here in India they're not invested in Star India, it's not a listed entity. They're probably invested in Z or in Balaji. And they're trying to get a sense of which way is the wind blowing. What or how should we be betting our money in the next phase on entertainment and news and sports uh, across the world? Does this give us any cues on what will be, you know, the trends from here onwards? No, uh, yes, it, it does. And I think uh, Star will now double down on, you know, what they've been doing. Hotstar, uh, which has been in, so far in investment mode, uh, uh, you know, will will continue to invest a lot of money because uh, that's what Disney wants, right? They want a service which uh, consumers are directly accessing. Uh, and I think they will also double down on sports. I mean, uh, I don't think to Disney it matters whether they make $500 million EBITDA in, you know, 2018 or 2022. So I think uh, this is going to be a continuation of uh, what Star has been doing with even more force, uh, because you know Star India is one of the biggest assets uh, in the uh, Fox International Empire. And, and you think Disney has the capability to push through because this acquisition actually internationalizes D Disney in ways that Disney would otherwise not have a uh, presence, whether it's in Europe or in India. They have the ability to understand these local markets, understand local consumers and push through with the, uh, you know, the right kind of programming and content. Well, I think, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it politely. See, they have a very good business already. All they have to do is not screw it up. I mean, if, uh, you know, if Uday Shankar continues to remain in charge and, you know, they, he continues to feel empowered, I don't see why, you know, they need to do anything different than what they've been doing. All right. So we we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for those insights on that big media deal across the world and what it means for India.